Hey everyone, welcome to Marketing by John. Today we're going to talk about the easiest way to get customers. Now, this is going to be talking directly to those of you that are relatively new to business. Maybe your business was a little bit affected or crushed by the pandemic and you really need to keep your business afloat with new customers and or clients if you're in the service business. So I have two real easy ways. I'm going to focus on two ways here. These are both things that I have used. I have recommended other people use um, friends and family as well as uh, colleagues and other people that own their own business. So the first one is to ask people. Now, these are going to seem super simple and they're going to be hard. They're going to take time, but they are very effective and you don't need any money to do them. Ask people. So if you're very early on in your business, ask family and friends. Uh, No matter what you're doing, if you're starting a marketing company, you're starting an auto repair shop out of your garage, you're starting a personal training company, Go and ask your friends and family. Don't wait. Right this second, pull out your phone and start texting friends and family. Hey, really need your help. I've started that personal training company that I've mentioned. Um, Are you interested? I'll do it for free. As long as you give me a good testimony, I'll give you five free sessions. Nope, you're not interested. Do you know anybody who's interested? Is anybody trying to get in shape in this new year? Because I will train them for free for five sessions. And then if they want to continue, it's going to be, you know, 20 bucks a session. I'll get to that pricing in just a second. That's actually number two. But ask friends and family first. You'll probably get a few people that say yes. When I started my first business, it was actually a personal training company, an online personal training company called the newfit.net. My first customers were friends and family. Um, They're going to want to do it just as a favor, but you can get valuable things that you need to grow your business, like case studies, like testimonials. You can use that for social proof to then go and sell future customers. Okay, so that's stage one, friends and family. If you've grown a little bit and you have friends and family as your customers, your clients, and maybe some of their friends that word of mouth has taken and you're looking to go to the next level, go back to your customers who are not friends and family and ask them. Offer them a referral commission. Hey, if you bring anybody in, I'll give you $5 off your next order or your next session or you know whatever business you're in. But go and ask your customers. This is a great strategy for somebody who's new um, to business, but this is also a fantastic strategy for somebody, a business that has 50,000 customers. Continuously go back and ask them, do you know anybody? Bring them into the family of you know brand X, Y, and Z. And uh, finally, uh, as you grow, you're going to have friends and family, of course. You're going to have customers. The next step is to go to your employees. Really empower your employees and treat them like ambassadors. They are great people to grow your brand and tell their friends and family. They're great to to bring in people who are good hires. Uh, They're great to bring in future team members and employees. They're great to bring in future customers. If you can get your employees to talk amazing things about the company that they work for, they will help to bring in new customers as well. So if your back is up against the wall, the pandemic has crushed you, uh, go back to your friends and family. Go back to your current customers or your past customers and go back to any employees that you have and say, hey, we need help. Uh, help us out. We're trying to, to get back on track and grow. Um, can you refer anybody to us? So that's number one. Number two is know your breaking point on things like price and profit and revenue or price and profit, really. Because If you are willing to give up profit, there's a lot of things you can do. The problem is most companies aren't willing to give up profit. So if you're willing to give up profit, you can do things like invest in a growing team. You can do... My heat's kicking on here. Hopefully you can't hear that. Uh, So if you're willing to give up profit, you can invest in your team. You can grow your team for people that you will need who maybe can put more into your company, like things like marketing and and sales to to grow your business further. If you're willing to give up profit, you can invest in your team. If you're willing to give up profit, um, then you can reinvest in research and development, product development, operational efficiencies, making your business better for the long run. If you're not willing to give up profit, you're probably going to grow a lot slower. Okay, Outside of a few industries that you can get a ridiculous amount of profit, um, you're... The more profit you take, the less growth you will have generally, or at least the less flexibility for growth you will have generally. Um, 
another thing that a lot of I, I preach on this podcast a lot is brand. And I'm always a fan of going premium. Try to keep your brand as high as you can so that people want it. They are willing to pay for it. That way you don't have to go for quantity of sales. You can go for quantity. Um, but if you're, if you're remaining premium, you have to understand that your growth will be slower as well. Because if you have a higher ticket price, um, chances are until you really get some momentum, growth is going to be slower. A lot less people are willing to spend $250 on an item than are willing to spend $50 on an item, let's say, right? Um, but you are also able to keep your profit a little bit more on a premium item. If you can charge a higher price, uh, chances are you'll get a higher profit margin by charging that higher price. Now, you need to be smart with your cost of goods in order to get that profit. But my point is, is if you can stay premium, you can grow slower and you can get some really loyal customers. That's what we've done with Jackson Jovi. So we have an athletic denim company. You can go buy Levi's all day long at TJ Maxx for 20 bucks, but you're going to get one leg that's shorter than the other. You're going to get, you know, holes ripped on, in them in a few months. Um, the zipper might not work, right? So you get what you pay for. You buy our jeans, you're going to pay $100 or more to get them, but you get things like uh, we're about to launch free repair on crotch blowouts uh, for the life of the jeans until there's no jeans left, until we can't stitch anything back together. Uh, you're going to get American made. You're going to get high quality denim. You're going to get a premium fit for an athletic body type. So you're going to get more from that. So we take a, a bigger profit. They also cost more to make, but we take a bigger profit and we have much less customers than somebody who's selling a pair of jeans for 20, 30, 40, $50 is going to get. But that's a choice we made. It makes our lives a lot easier because we don't mind growing slow and we're going to grow strong. So those are the two things that I would highly recommend. Number one, ask people when you're looking for customers. Just ask them. Go on LinkedIn, direct message people. Go on Instagram. Hey, want to be a customer? I'll give you $5 off. I don't know. Like, it's slow, which is why nobody's willing to do it. And it seems a lot harder than going and running a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad. But it's one-to-one -one connection. This is literally, I just talked about this in the last podcast. This is literally how we're selling tickets for our event, No Bull 2020. Keynote is Gary Vaynerchuk. It's a great value, but we are going to LinkedIn and Instagram and people who love Gary Vaynerchuk, and we're literally just messaging them, hey, you want to come see Gary live? We'll give you a discount. One by one, we're doing that. And the second thing is know your breaking point. If you're willing to give up profit, you're probably going to be able to have more flexibility to grow faster. If you're not willing to give up profit, you're probably going to grow slower. Um, Either of those could be the right decision for you, but you have to know your breaking point as to what flexibility you have to give discounts, to give, to run sales, um, you know, make profit. All of that comes into play. So those are my two tips for you. They don't cost any money unless you look at decreasing profit as losing money, which I know a lot of you financial gurus out there will, but that's my two cents. If you found this podcast helpful, don't forget, I'm brand new here. We need followers and fans of people who can uh, find value out of this content that I'm putting out. So make sure you share this with your friends. Make sure you like this post so that the social media algorithms will take place. And don't forget to subscribe if you found this valuable because you will miss all my future episodes if you don't subscribe. So if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this podcast for the first time, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye.